publicly at the Darululum al Qadriya al Jilaniya until, com uh, until convocation. After Islamic sciences, he studied philosophy at St. Andrews University and the University of Oxford, and he's currently studying, at he's currently doing a PhD at King's College. Salawat. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقل تعالوا ندعو أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم ثم نبتهل فنجعل لعنة الله على الكاذبين صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه. My dear brothers and sisters, um, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We have gathered here today to um, commemorate the greatest tragedy in the history of mankind. We're here to pay a tribute to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Um, I commend uh, my dear brothers and sisters today for um, regularly organizing um, such an event where you invite people from across the various you know, different Muslim denominations to come and present their point of view on, in particular, about Karbala. Um, there, there's a lot of things I have to say today, but I believe that um, there are certain atoms of information I've got that I think that are important, uh, essential, fundamental to to us Muslims all. So I thought. I'll speak about four or five different s topics within the general topic of Karbala. Um, my dear brothers, um, Sheikh Fadli Muhammad Al Qadri has been here before, uh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad, uh, Sheikh Tawfir Ishaq, and I believe tomorrow um, Qari Asim Saab is coming today. So, uh, mashallah, well done to you for organizing such an event. Uh, where we can, from the Sunni Muslims, can come and inform you of what we believe about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Before I go into the, the main sort of few things I intend to speak about, as an epitome of Sunni Islam, as a symbol or of our belief about Imam Hussein, I would just cite, uh, recite just two quatrains um, about, you know, when Islam went to India and, you know, India and Pakistan first, it was spread by the Sufi, the great Sufi, Sunni Sufi mystics. And the greatest one of them is Sayyidna Khwaja Mu'inuddin Chishti Ajmeri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was the descend he was a Sayyid and descendant of Imam Musa al Kadhim alayhi salam. And he quite beautifully explains what is the Sunni perspective on Karbala. You've heard one of the quatrains before. He says, Shah Ast Hussein, Bad Shah Ast Hussein. Deen Ast Hussain, Deen e Pana Ast Hussain, Sardad Nadad Dust, Dust Te Yadar Dust Te Yazid, Hakka Ke Binai La Ila Ast Hussain. He says Hussain is the prince, Hussain is the king. Deen Ast Hussain, Hussain is the name of our Deen, Deen e Pana Ast Hussain. Hussein is the protector of our deen. 
Hussein is such a personality that he gave his head, but he did not give his hand in the hand of Yazid. And he says, Hakkake bina la ila astu Hussein. And he concludes that the simple thing is, Hussein is the basis of La ilaha illallah. Why is he the basis of La ilaha illallah? Because he rose up against the enemy of La ilaha illallah. He rose up against Yazid, who internally was not a Muslim. Yazid wanted, my dear brothers and sisters, that there should be no La ilaha illallah. There should be no Muhammad Rasulullah. There should be no Hajj. He was drunk on Hajj. Ibn Asir al Kamil, Yazid. So Imam Hussein rose up against the enemy of La ilaha illallah. And Mu'inuddin Chishti radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, Hakka ke bina ila ila asta Hussein. Hussein is the basis of La ilaha illallah because he rose up against the enemies of La ilaha illallah. And in another Rubai, which is not very um, uh, famous, people don't know about, so I'll read that before I begin my um, the project here today. But just at the beginning, just to explain, if I miss out a few things at the end, uh, just to explain that the, what is the Sunni Islam? What is the Ahl Sunnah belief on Karbala? You know, my dear brothers and sisters, it's um, the people in India and Pakistan in particular, majority of them, who are Muslims, how did they become Muslim? These people, Khwaja Muinuddin Chishti, Data Ali Hajweri, these are the people who converted them to Islam. Mu'inuddin Chishti, radiallahu anhu, he didn't go and present a rational argument about the justification of Islam. People looked at him walking through the fields and he goes, that man is on haq. That man is on truth. And the belief of this man is that Shah Asta Hussein, Baad Shah Asta Hussein. We are though that Sunni. He is our Imam. And he says at the end of his diwan, there's a section on qitat, a section on, um, you know, short poetry by him. It's an ancient one, we, an old one we've got at home. He says that, another rupai says, Kare ke Hussain ikhtiare kardi. Dar gulshane Mustafa bahare kardi. Az hech payambaran na amad inkar. Wallah, a Hussein, Ankare Kardi. He says, Oh, Hussein, Hussein did such a deed. He, he did such a, such a thing, he says, that with the, with the actions of Hussein, the spring came into the garden of Mustafa. Hussein's actions were such, his trials and tests and tribulations. As hage by Ambarana Amandi Kar, we don't know anything of such trials and tribulations reported to us by the prophets. Wallah Hussein Inkare Kardi. By God Hussein did such a great deed, such a great work for, for the Deen of Islam. So my topic that you know the Sunni perspective on Karbala. Well, this is my dear brothers and sisters is the Sunni perspective on Karbala. This is what we believe about Imam Hussein salam, and Karbala. And if you hear people speak other than that narrative, then we don't consider them as the Sunni perspective on Karbala. However, my dear brothers and sisters, the, the banner under which, or the umbrella under which this event is organized by the SICM is, is unity, scholarship, and so on. And I wanted to say a few words on those, just a few minutes. 
about the unity? Is it like an emotional thing for us that, you know, we live in a society and we think, okay, let's be brothers and sisters, we are unity Muslims, or does it have any rational Islamic basis for it? And that's a really important question. And that needs to be, needs to be justified. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, the evidences are of two types. You have al-adillatul naqaliyya and al-adillatul aqaliyya. There's just two types of evidences. The transmitted evidence and the rational evidence. Transmitted evidence is like the Quran, the, the sunnah hadith, the history of Islam. So this is what's called the transmitted evidence. But how do we attain certainty in transmission? So, so when we look at the transmitted evidence, we find that we can divide all that's reported from the Prophet ﷺ to our times in two broad categories. We can either say that it is absolutely certain, or we can say that this idea falls in the basket of probability. So transmitted evidence can be divided into two aspects, certainty and probability. How do we attain certainty? Certainty, my dear brothers and sisters, comes from definite text which carries with it a definite meaning. So what I'm trying to say is that the Quran, Sharif, is a definite text, is 100% the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not every verse of the Quran carries with it a definite meaning. There are various interpretations. Imam al-Shafi'i interprets a verse differently. Imam Abu Hanifa interprets the same verse differently. So hence, something that exists in the Quran but does not have a definite meaning, falls in the basket of probability. On the other hand, we have a text which is speculative, like a hadith, because hadith nar narrations, in essence, you know, majority of Khabr al-Wahid are uh, probable, even though they have a sahih sanat, but they fall in the basket of probability because there are so many six, seven, eight people narrating. You know, you cannot, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can't say that, you know, one of them has erred in there or one of them has added something into it. Even though by the, the standards of Asmar Rajal, the Hadith classification, they may be all uh, truthful people. So Hadith, Khabr al-Wahid, the single chain narration, always falls in the basket of probability. So now we have a hadith which is um, absolutely uh, clear in meaning, has a definite meaning, but it does not have a definite text. The reason is for a definite text to be, for example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said something to one of his companions and then he went and passed the information on to another one and to another one until a, a book of hadith is written, let's say Bukhari, and Imam Bukhari collects this whole chain and puts it in his book. As opposed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are tens of people around him and he says, al Hasano." Wal Husaynu, Sayyida Shabab Ahlil Jannah. It is not reported from one Sahabi, but it's Mutawatir. It's reported from multiple chains and sources. So the point I'm trying to make is that certainty comes from definite text which carries a definite meaning. This will take a lot of time. Actually, it's a work in progress. So I just thought I'd give you a snapshot of it. But the point is this look, we are Sunni Muslims, 
We are Shia Muslim. We are Wahhabi Muslim, the, the main sects today. Sunni, but there's a Muslim. Shia, but it's Muslim. Wahhabi, but it's Muslim. That aspect which makes us Muslim, that part that makes all of us as Muslim, is definite text which carries a definite meaning. And all the differences that we have, Sunni or Shia or Wahhabi, the other differences, those differences, my dear brothers and sisters, they had, had they been absolute certainty, everyone would have believed in them. So just on the basis, so then, you know, like a Venn diagram in mathematics, I'm not good at maths, by the way, but just, you know, mathematics, a Venn diagram, so you draw a circle and then another one and then another one. And they, there is a part where the three circles overlap. All have share in it some space. That is definite text which carries a definite meaning. That is what makes us all Muslim. And all others, so there's a part which is the Sunnis, independent, they have their idea, part that the Shia have their idea, the part that the Wahhabis have their idea. And then there's parts that the Sunni and Shia would agree, parts that the Wahhabi and Sunni agree, part that the Wahhabis and Shia agree. So the point I'm trying to make that the basis of unity are that we are Muslim. And what makes us a Muslim, my dear brothers and sisters, is that absolute certain evidence in Islam. So all our differences, we could have our differences intact, but it does not negate us being a Muslim. So, so that's one of the ideas uh, of, of the unity of Muslims, that we, we need to uh, have unity on the basis of a framework. And talking of a framework, I will, I'm coming to Karbala, inshallah. But I think these are very important and essential matters. People are maybe listening to it out there. So the point is that that's what makes us Muslim. And then there are other areas which are most likely, they are probable, most likely, but the negation of that does not take us out of the fold of Islam. However, talking of framework, so when we look at history, and this is kind of a sep separate atom of information, um, so, so that's, keep that in mind. Coming to Karbala, you know, we are talking about the Sunni perspective. I said about the unity part because I think that's the umbrella under which we are discussing this whole thing. Karbala, Karbala, what is Karbala? It's a historical event. In, in, it happened in, in history, uh, uh, 1400 years ago, around about, at the burning plains of Karbala, it happened there. Perspective. Now, history is also, there are two things in history. There are the facts of history, and then there's a framework of interpretation. So. You have the facts of history, but the interpretation, we put the lens of framework, we put a lens through which we then view history. So history itself depends on the framework through which we look at history. Let me give you an example. Reformation. Reformation in European history, uh, a momentous event where you've got the, in Gutenberg in Germany, I think it's 1453 or 1543, something like that. Martin Luther, he rises up against the Catholic Church, puts these points of difference on the door of the cathedral, and he breaks away from Catholicism. So that period of history, according to the Protestants, is known as Reformation they consider it as a, as a positive thing, reformation. But the Catholics consider the same event as a heresy, bid'ah. 
The third group, the Marxists, they neither consider it as reformation or heresy. They think it's uh, a revolution, economic based on economics. So the facts of history have not changed. But what has changed is the framework of interpretation of that history. The two big frameworks of history, and this is being simplistic, history does not, is not interpreted in those two, strictly in those ways, but uh, I see young people, students. So just as a simplistic example, not that actually applies 100%, the two big frameworks of history we have is causality on one side and chance on the other side. So the causality idea is that each event is linked to the event before, and there's a chain of events. So you can trace back all the chain of events and say that it's, it's just a deterministic idea. Second World War took place because of the First World War. You know, the rep what was it, reparations or something like that? There was, um, uh, you know, the demand... Uh, the demand uh, of huge amount of sums from Germany, the weakness of Weimar Republic, the, um, the Hitler guy, you know, the Hitler. Uh, th there were so many different factors, the chain of events, that then led to the Second World War. So that is a causal, causal way of looking at that the history is in a chain, is causality. So that's the big framework of interpretation that you interpret history through uh, some kind of a deterministic idea. On the other side, the other group would suggest that no, all history is chance. It just happens by chance. Ottoman Sultan is ruling Eastern Europe. He then encircled Geneva in order to get into Western Europe and then conquer the whole of the Western, Western Europe, Western world. What happens? The Sultan gets the bout of gout, unable to move. So he says, well, I will ret I will, we'll retire this year. We'll come back next year to attack. But when he came back, by the time he comes back next year, he died. So the historians say that, you know, that is an act of chance. Had he, the Sultan, had he not got the gout, the, the, you know, the, the Europeans would have been speaking Turkish today. This act of chance. Forget that, coming close to uh, our subject. The Banu Umayya, the last of the Umayyad kings, the last of the Umayyad rulers, I think his name was Muhammad ibn Marwan or something like that, is fighting with the Abbasids. The Abbasid forces and the Umayyad forces were fighting. And this guy was their last Umayyad caliph. And in the heat of the battle, he had to answer the call of nature. So he goes and hides behind some rock or stone. And the enemy, the enemy Abbasid soldiers see, goes, oh my God, that's the caliph. And then they kill him. You know, this gave rise to an Arabic proverb. The Rahabati Dawla Bibola. That a dynasty was swept away with urine. Act of chance. So Karbala is a event in history. Karbala happened historically. It, the facts of history. But how do we go about interpreting the events of Karbala? Because it needs a framework of interpretation. There was the king of the time, a very powerful king, something like 23 provinces and, you know, far and wide, big king, a king left, and he, he died and he left his son in charge of the kingdom. A one man in one of his provinces, everyone bows to him, to the king, 
But there's one man. He says, no, people like me don't do the birth of people like him. Imam Hussein rises up against Yazid. So the natural, how do we interpret that? What happens there? As Muslims, we face this problem sometimes because, you know, we, we've got some literalists. You know, like everybody has lunatics. You know, I'm sure you have your lunatic fringe. We have our lunatic fringe. Because this lunatic fringe, my dear brothers and sisters, the issue, the issue of Yazid of the past, the issue of the Yazid of yesterday was the existence of Hussein. And the issue of Yazid of today is the remembrance of Hussein. We have them. So how do we interpret this? The framework of the event, my dear brothers and sisters, it's, it's not a part of history. You know, a lot of the times, I, I, I hear people and speak to you, oh, yeah, it's a part of history, you know, historical events, people can, um, you know, make them up, uh, you know, these historical events, uh, people can concoct them and make them up. So, you know, there's so much, uh, there's not much truth in it and all the details are fabricated. And so it's a very easy way of kind of uh, rejecting the Karbala narrative. To easy way out, oh, come on, it's between two princes, or you know, like that. But you know, the fact is that Karbala is not solely based on the books of history. Karbala is in the Hadith literature and is such a momentous event, certain importance important event in the history of Islam that the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam before the birth of Imam Hussein told us before the birth of Imam Hussein he said Hussein will be killed with Shaheed after the birth of Imam Hussein Rasulullah says, Hussein will be killed. After the shahadat of Imam Hussein, Rasulullah is telling us through a dream at the plains of Karbala, collecting the blood of the martyrs. So the whole Karbala tragedy is not something, a power struggle between two princes or kings, but it very much has a religious sanction, sanctioned by the most important person in our deen, the Prophet Wasallam himself. So I would like now to quickly provide a framework of interpretation for Karbala and the existential justification of Karbala in Hadith literature. Wouldn't hold you there for long, but there is some work I have done already. So this in front of me is al ahadith sahiyah Silsilatul ahadith sahiyah by the Salafist, um, the renowned Salafist scholar, Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani. He was a, a prominent Wahhabi scholar. He recently died. In his collection of the Sahih Hadith, book of Sahih Hadith, here is the Hadith about Imam Hussein alayhi salam's shahadat before his birth. So this is in Silsilatul Ahadith is Sahih. I will go through it quickly. Umm al-Fadl bint al-Haris, radiyallahu anha, she says that, uh, and, uh, you know, said the reporter says that she went to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and says, Ya Rasulullah, inni ra'aytu 
that Munkar, uh, one night at Rasulullah, I saw a nightmare, a bad dream. And it is in the shadeed, it's a very bad dream. Qala, the Prophet says, Maho, what is it? And she says, Ra'aytu ka anna kat'atan min jastika utti'at wudi'at fi hijri. That as if a piece of meat from you, Rasulullah, had fallen in my lap. Rasulullah says, in the book of history, the book of Hadith, Sahih Hadith, the Prophet Raiti Khairan that you is a good dream. Talidu Fatima to insha'Allah ta'ala, Ghulaman, that the Fatima will have a son and that little baby will be in your lap. And then Fatima. Uh, Salamullah alayha gave birth to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and he was Umm al-Fazl says that he was in my lap as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so she says فَدَخَلْتُ يَوْمًا إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ and I came one day to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and what do I see? that Rasulullah is, is crying heavily, profusely is crying. He's crying. And I says, Ya Nabi Allah or oh, oh, the Prophet uh, Rasulullah what happened? And the Prophet says, Atani Jibrailo, Fahbarani. Inna ummati sataqtalo ibn haza yani al Hussein. That Jibrail has come and informed me that my son Hussein will be killed by my ummat. And he has brought me the, the red soil from the place where he will be killed. In the comments to this hadith, Al Albani, Sheikh Al Albani says, Kulto, I say, Lakin lahu shawahidu adida tashadu li sihatihi. He goes, This hadith has many, many, many different evidences and means that this is an authentic Sahih hadith. So, this is something happening prior to the birth of Imam Hussein. It's not in Tariq Tabari. It's in a hadith by Silsilatul Ahadith Asaya by Nasruddin al-Bani. So are you with me about how we interpret Karbala? It's, Karbala is interpreted for us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If look, Imam, it's the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to cry for Imam Hussein. Do you know we as a brother, is sunnah, sunnah, sunnah. This is sunnah, man. Crying for Imam Hussein alayhi salam is the sunnah for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal in his Fada'il al-Sahaba narrates a hadith. And it is also authenticated by al-Mullah al-Ikari al-Hanafi, the great Hanafi Imam. We are alhamdulillah Hanafi. Mullah al-Ikari says that Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, Man dama'at aynahu fina dama'atan. Whoever cries for us once. Oh man qatarat aynahu fina qatratan. Whoever sheds a tear for us. Fa'ata Allahul Jannah. Allah will grant him paradise. This is Ahl Sunnah sources. The second place. So Jibreel alayhi salam comes and tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that your son will be shaheed. This is Fada'il al-Sahaba by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. The, the, four, you know, the four Imams, Sunni Imams, he is one of those Imams. The hadith number in Fada'il al-Sahaba is 1357. Its commentator was Yullah bin Muhammad al-Abbas who is a, a teacher at the Makkah Umm al -Qura University. Uh, you know, a Salafi scholar, he says under it 
uh, under the hadith, uh, number 1357, he says, uh, the isnaduhu sahi, the chain of his reports is sahi, is authentic. So what's the hadith? Same thing. Uh, it says, an Aisha or Umm Salama, either it's from Aisha or from Umm Salama. He says that, لَقَدْ دَخَلَ عَلَيَّ الْبَيْتَ مَلَكٌ That on one day, an angel came to the Prophet Wasallam, who never came to the Prophet Wasallam. So a Jibreel salam, comes and tells him, and then a strange angel, an angel who never came to the Prophet Wasallam, he comes and he tells uh, 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 Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna ibn Kahada Hussainun Maktulun. Ya Rasulullah, your son Hussein will be killed. Maktul. For in shi'ta, and if you want, I can bring the turbat. I can bring the soil where Hussein will be killed on Karbala. You know, it doesn't say Karbala, but where he will be killed. For akharaja ilayya turbat hamara. And then, Rasulullah says, bring it. And the angel bring, brings that red soil, red soil from the place where Imam Hussain will be shaheed. Do you see, not only the event, but the, the turbat is so sacred. It is so, it's so holy, so sacred that Rasulullah offers to bring it and smell it. Sahih hadith, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. So this is, the foretelling of the shahadat of Imam Hussein, not in had tarikh book, hadith sahih. And there's more, but uh, I will finish. So that's for Da'ilu Sahaba. Tarikhul Islam is by Zahabi. Zahabi is one of the students of Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah uh, was a right winger in terms of interpretation and um, um, he was one of his students, so obviously he, he, you know, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? So he was very close to uh, a Zahabi, but in his Tarikhul Islam, this is his book, a Zahabi is a great Hadith scholar, no doubt, uh, selective, but Hadith scholar. Uh, and he says uh, about the same thing, and so on, that Hussein will be killed, and if you want, I can bring the turbat. If you want, and, and Zahabi says, Isnaduhu Sahi, Rawaw Ahmad Wun Nas, and the, the report is Sahi, and it's reported by Imam Ahmad and many, many other people. So this is after the birth of Imam Hussein. You've seen before the dream, now after the birth, an angel comes to the Prophet and says, and it's authenticated, it's not a daif fabricated, it's sahih hadith. It's such an important event that Rasulullah was, the angels are coming, man. You know, Jibra'il, strange angels, the angel of rain, different people, different from the celestial offices of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is different angels are coming to, to tell the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah Hussein will be killed. Hussein will be shaheed. In Sahih Hadith, I did not make it up. Our Salafist scholars are saying Sahih Hadith. Ahadith Sahiya, Silsilatul Ahadith Sahiya, Nasruddin al Albani again says, it's a long Hadith. He says that Anabi Tufail is that Malakul Qatar. The angel of rain sought permission to see Rasulullah wasallam, and then he comes in al Husayna yuqtalo bishattil furat that Hussein will be killed on the banks of the river Euphrates. Angel of rain, Al Albani. He says, وَبِلْ جُمْلَةِ فَالْحَدِيثُ الْمَذْكُورِ And he says, سَحِيُّنْ بِمَجْمُوِعِ هَذِهِ الطُرَقِ This is hadith is sahih. Because there are so many chains of narrations together that this is sahih. He is authenticating it. Angel of rain. Why the angel of rain? Malakul Qatar. I mean, come on, why? Jibreel alayhi salam, you know, who's the, the in charge of the information, you know. 
and, and another angel, uh, an angel who doesn't, is not who, and then an angel of rain. Why? It's an indication that Ya Rasulullah, rain and water has been given by Allah Ta'ala in my control. But on the day of Karbala, I'll be unable to give rain to your children because it is the decision of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Angel of rain. And here, my dear brothers and sisters, it is strange thing. You know, Tabqat, Tabqat ibn Sa'ad is the earliest Tabqat work. Uh, you know, in, his, in, in Ahl Sunnah, he died in 270. So he's a contemporary of Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, and so on, right? Tabaqat work. You know, and in Tabaqat of Ibn Sa'ad, there is an, a report which is, meets the standards of Seer and Maghazi. He says, Haddasana Muhammad ibn Sa'ad. He reports on Muhammad ibn Umar. He reports on Abdullah ibn Jafar. And he reports on Abi'aun. What is the narration? Lama kharaja Hussain ibn Ali min al Madinati. When Imam Hussain alayhi salam left Medina, you know, his eventual destination was Kufa, you know, to, towards Iraq. So he went from Medina, then he's going to Mecca, and then, you know, you are familiar. And, then, and when Imam Hussain had left Medina, Sharif, and on his way with his family and so on, and he met a man called Ibn Matir. And this is Tabqat Ibn Sa'ad, you know, this is not Tariq Tabari, you know. And, and he says, Fakala, Aina Fidaka Abi Wami, Ya, you know, Ya Hussain, where are you going? You know, which way, where are you heading? And, and, and he says, ah, Ratul uh, Kufa or Mecca, you know, he's going. And then, long story, and he says, may my parents be sacrificed on you, Ya Imam Hussain. And he says, Inna bi'ri hadihi qad rashahat. Uh, that, Ya Imam, you know, my, this well I've got, this well of water, it's dried up. You know, imagine in that harsh terrain of Hijaz. Hot. He goes, my well is dried up. There's no water. Says to Imam Hussain, Imam Hussain is leaving Medina Sharif to go eventually to Karbala. And on his way, this man says, Ibn Mati, Ya Hussain, you know, my well is dried up. There's no water in it. What does Imam Hussain, alayhi salam, say to him? He says to him, Hati min ma'iha. Go and bring whatever little water it has, bring the water to me. So he goes and brings the little water that it has, and he gives it to Imam Hussain. Imam Hussain drinks it, does mad madha, and then he, after drinking, he throws the water back into the well. What happened? Fa'adaba wa amha. The well suddenly filled up with water, and the water was so sweet and so nice. Hussein alayhi salam, had he ordered the clouds, had he, to look, the water, but he was following the mashiyat, he was following the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a karamat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. There are um, other evidences, um, for, for example, Musnad Abu Ya'la, he died in 307, is also a Salafist, Zakla, is also a Salafist literature. Uh, so I've given you a Sahih Hadith, and I stand by them, you know, anytime. Sahih Hadith, and now another, another history book from, uh, from the Sunni aspect, Musnad Abu Ya'la, Al-Mawsali. 
It's a, a research by Ashad al Haq al Athari. In it, there's a hadith, and the hadith number is 358, uh, and it's graded by Imam al Haythami in Majma al Zawaid. He says that Rajaluhu Thikat, that the reporters of this hadith are authentic. And it's also reported from Imam Ahmad, Abu Yala, Al Bazar, Al Tabarani. And another Salafist scholar, Muhammad Ahmad Shakir, in his commentary on Muslim Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he comments that Isnaduhu Sahi. He says that the, the Isnad of this hadith are Sahi. So it's authenticated by various different people. al haythami al shakir and so on. The hadith is long. When Imam Ali, <coughs> Karamallahu Wajah al Karim, was traveling to, from Sifin, you know, Sifin is in Iraq, and he's traveling from Sifin. And he reached Nainawa, you know, around there. And he says, Isbir. Aba Abdullah, Isbir Aba Abdullah. Imam Ali is going to Sifin. He says, Oh, Abu Abdullah, have sabr. Be patient. His companions, people, they didn't know whose epithet, you know, whose kunia was Abu Abdullah. He said, Mada, who is this Abu Abdullah? Hazrat. Mawla Ali alayhi salam says, Dakhaltu ala ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dhaqa yawmin. That once I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa'aynahu tafidhan. And he was heavily crying. And I said, Ya Rasulullah, what happened? Why are you crying? He goes, Bal qama min Jibreel has come. And he told me that your son Hussein will be killed on the banks of Euphrates. It tells that Hussein will be killed, but it also tells us the place where he will be killed. The Jibreel comes and tells Rasulullah And as a result of it, the Prophet is crying. This is a Sahih Hadith. And then, Hallaka an ushimmaka min turbati. And then Jibreel says, Would you like to smell the, the, the soil of Karbala? And he says, Yes. And then Jibreel bought it. And Rasulullah smelled it. So, this is in Musnad of Abu Ya'la, another Sahih Hadith that where Imam Hussein's Shahadat, his martyrdom, is foretold by the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. After the shahadat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, before birth, when he's a child, and now after his shahadat. And this hadith is also al-Albani said isnaduhu sahih. He also categorizes the hadith as sahih. In Fada'il al-Sahaba, uh, the, the Wasiullah, he also says that Isnaduhu Sahih. So the, another Hadith narra narration which says that the chain of narration is Sahih of this Hadith. What is it? It's from Hazrat Ibn Abbas. Anhu. He says, Ra'aytun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that once he says, I was asleep, Niswan Nahar in the afternoon or something like that, and he says, I was asleep, and I saw the Prophet ﷺ in a dream. Now, by the way, in Bukhari, Muslim, all these books, it is unanimous that man ra'ani faqad ra al haq That when this, this sun, ahl sunnah aqidah is, that whoever sees the Prophet ﷺ in a, in a dream, he definitely sees the Prophet ﷺ in a dream. Shaitan cannot imitate to be the Prophet ﷺ. So the dream of Ibn Abbas is actually, he definitely sees Rasulullah ﷺ. Hadd Ibn Abbas, what does he say? 
He says, I saw the Prophet وسلم, in a dream one day. And Ashata Akbara by Yadihi Karuratun Fiha Dammu. That I saw the Prophet. This is Sahih Hadith. He says, He did not have an amama on his head. His hair was disheveled, you know, all over the place. It had, you know, Gardo Gobar. You know, it had. It's, it's not very, or the mud and clay or whatever, you know, sand in his hair. His hair is all over the place in a very, very sad state. Sad state of the Prophet ﷺ. In his hand, bijadihi qaruratun. In his hand is a bottle and in it is blood. Fakulto bi abi. Anta wa ummi wa hada ya Rasulullah, my, my parents be sacrificed on you. What is this? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hada dammul Husayni wa ashabihi. This is the blood of Hussein and his companions. <coughs> Rasulullah in a, such a sad state, collecting the blood of the martyrs on the day of Karbala. And the reporter says, And when they, when Ibn Abbas told the, uh, when Ibn Abbas explained and told the um, about Karbala, they collected. When the news then came, the news then came from Karbala that you know a few weeks later, or you know, because it was. And they, then they put the days in, you know, together and said, right, this is exactly the time when Imam Hussein salam, was <coughs> shaheed and martyred. So Karbala, it is not a fight between two princes. It is not a fight for political gains. It is not a fight for the world, but it is fight for the deen. It is fight sanctioned by the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allama Iqbal, the, the Musavvir Pakistan, says, in the quwwat az hayata mad padid, Musa o fir'aun o shabbir o yazid. See that these two forces of good and evil have been traveling down from Adam alayhi salam to Musa, to us, to this day. What are these forces? The enemy of Musa was Fir'aun. Musa, the representative of the forces of good. Fir'aun, the representative of evil. Similarly, Imam Hussein alayhi salam is the representative of all the forces of good. And Yazid is the representative of all the forces of evil. I had a lot more. I'm finishing now, as the brother has told me there, that I've got five minutes left. I had actually researched uh, the accounts of the maqatil of Karbala. The accounts of it. All the way down to 80 after Hijrah. Actually, it's one of the earliest things written. Hadith later. And there's a whole list of 10 early ones and so on. And I will leave that because uh, 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 it's, it's a lengthy discussion. But however, about coming back to the Karbala and the Sunni aspect, you see, uh, my dear uh, brothers and sisters, that Ahl Sunnah, prominent, there's no Sunni in the you know, Imam who had not condemned Yazid. None. Everybody agrees that he was a Farsiq and Fajr, the worst. All the great Imams of Ahl Sunnah. And amongst them, my dear brothers and sisters, amongst them, the people of Ahl Sunnah had declared him Kafir, declared him a non Muslim. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal is famous for declaring Yazid to be a kafir because he killed Imam Hussein 
ابن الجوزي الحمبلی قادی ابو یعلی قادی ثناء اللہ پانی پتی جلال الدین السیوتی تاریخ الفائی سنزلانہ ون یزید قادی الشوکانی ملہ علی کاری الحنفی شارع الشفا بزاز فتاوہ بزازی از حنفی فتوہ کافر ملعون امام کستلانی ان انشاد الساری and we read when the ulama study the dars and nizam in the traditional sunni syllabus for becoming scholars one of the prominent books of aqeedah is sharul aqaid and in this aqeedah book imam at taft this is what the sunnis oh, i don't know why they probably skip that part imam at taftazani clearly declares about the sunni belief about yazid he says nahnu la natawakkafu fi shanihi bal fi imanihi la'natullahi alayhi wa ala ansarihi wa awanihi he says we don't suspend judgment on yazid la we don't doubt that he we doubt his iman and we send lana upon him and upon his helpers and upon his friends this is the sunni perspective on karbala and you know that i had a little speech by the yazid's son by the way his name was uh, muawiya ibn yazid ibn muawiya and his opinion about his dad but i will skip that and i will just finish uh, if you give me 5 minutes with this idea of because my subject is the sunni perspective on karbala there is a book very renowned book it's called sirru shahadatain written by shah abdul aziz ad dehlavi in india and pakistan we have the two prominent sunni sort of people the majority is the barelvis and the other one is the deobandi the barelvis and deobandis whatever I, this is not the time but the shah abdul aziz ad dehlavi is a common scholar for both the groups so they both <coughs> say great imam we believe you know it's, they're not so shah abdul aziz the early scholar he says he wrote a book called sirr shahadatain the secret of the two martyrdoms the martyrdom of imam hasan and the martyrdom of imam hussein alayhum assalam what does he say he says that the shahadat of imam hasan and hussein is actually the shahadat of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how he says the reason for that is this he says the reason is that rahmatul lil alamin khatam an nabiyin hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he is the best of all the prophets all the qualities all the great characteristics that the previous prophets had adam ibrahim nu isa musa alayhim assalam all the prophets every single quality that they all had is all in one rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he says but rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam there are prophets in the quran who were martyred in the way of allah they were killed so the shahadat is such a great quality on the battlefield but rasulullah alayhi salatu doesn't have the shahadat so he says he says that if rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam was killed in the way of allah in the battlefield the cynics would have said that the message is incomplete and if rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam has not died in the way of allah the cynics would have said oh they he has he, you know he's rahmatul lil alamin khatam an nabiyin is the greatest prophet but you know he lacks shahadat so shah abdul aziz ad dehlavi says that the shahadat is two types sirri and jahri the one that's hidden we don't know who done it by poison and the one in the battleground these are the two types of shahadat and he says 
through Hassan and Hussein, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the fidya of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the shahadat of Hassan and Hussein is actually the shahadat of Hassanain Karimain. And that's why, you know, say, Rasulullah says, Hussainun minni wa ana min Hussain. Say hadith al-Albani again. Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Every grandson is from the grandfather. Of course. But how is the grandfather from the grandson? It means that Hussein will do. Hussein will do what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have done if he was alive at that time. So, in conclusion, I wanted to um, also speak about Hazrat Sayyidah Zainab sallallahu alayhi but uh, the time doesn't allow me. But I think that the leader of Karbala from Medina to Karbala is Imam Hussein. And the leader of this caravan from Karbala to Damishq is Sayyid Zainab. In the bazaar, Hamidiyah or something, Syria, this whole caravan of Ahl al Bayt, all, you know, the head of Hussein, alayhi salam, Ali Akbar, Abbas, all the Ahlul Bayt, all their heads were on the lances, being paraded from village to village. Can you imagine? Do you know if Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, was asked before, if he was asked, oh Hussein, you know, you will have to leave Mecca, Medina. He will say, yes, I will leave it. I will leave for, for, for the way of Allah. He says, oh Hussein, you will have to leave Medina. Yes. You will have to leave the Rosa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. says, yes. You will have to leave the grave of your mother Fatima Zahra. He says, yes. You will have to go to leave Hajj. Halfway through, he says, yes. He says, the water will be you know, you will prevent it from the water on the 7th of Muharram. He says, yes, your sons, nephews, brothers, supporters, companions, all will be killed in the way of Allah. He says, yes. But if Imam Hussein was asked that your sisters will be paraded without hijab, I'm sure he would have paused for a minute there. Karbala, of course, is a great tragedy. The men die. But for me, the most painful event is after Karbala. Do you know these Sayyidah Zainab and all the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 30 odd villages, they're going from Kuf, Karbala, Kufa, Damishk, paraded through people on top of the houses, looking at them. Who are these people, strangers? This woman asks, asks her, oh, who are you, this elderly lady? And she says, oh, uh, I'm Zainab, you know, the daughter of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She says, oh, I used to work in Medina, this elderly lady. Oh, yeah, you're the daughter of Fatima, are you? Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember 50, whatever number of years ago, yeah. She had these two little children, Hassan and Hussein. How are they? What happened? She says that the Hassan has already died, and that is Hussein on the lands over there. Wa akhru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.